image capture on the TI-99 for a computer. Not exactly something anybody imagined back when the computer was introduced in 1979. And so this is what made it rather attractive as a project, is can it be done? It certainly has been done on um, most other computers of the era, um, including the Commodore, uh, Atari, Apple, and of course Amigas. So I figured, let's give it a shot. The concept is simple. Um, uh, the main issue for me, of course, was first finding a uh, camera to interface with the computer. And after some uh, search, the easiest way was to simply use a Raspberry Pi camera connected to a Raspberry Pi to serve as the uh, image capture device and then transmit that uh, image to the TI for processing and display on the screen. So um, I looked around in my uh, spare box and uh, I found a uh, Raspberry Pi Model B which is ancient by today's standard but works just fine for these purposes. And um, I uh, got a uh, Raspberry Pi camera. Not sure if they have a newer model these days or not but this one I've had also in my toolbox and I have purchased a, an extension cable for it uh, to make it more practical to use. And so this served as a basis. Um, what I did is basically um, use uh, the uh, currently available software for the Pi camera on the Raspberry Pi uh, within the Python programming language to capture an RGB image um, in a resolution that is compatible with the TI-99 for a computer which is 256 by 192 pixels. So the function of the Raspberry Pi in this project is strictly to capture an image and send the raw RGB data, albeit uh, compressed from uh, 3 bytes per pixel to 1 byte per pixel to the TI via the parallel port. One of the issues we have of course is that the Raspberry Pi operates at 3.3 volts whereas the uh, TI's parallel port operates at uh, TTL logic levels of 5 volts. So I had to create an interface uh, to convert uh, the voltages back and forth between the TI and the Raspberry Pi to compatible levels otherwise um, will run the risk of destroying the Raspberry Pi. And this is what this interface is about. It's uh, home built. Um, this is a connector for the uh, parallel port on the TI. And these chips essentially represent chif uh, level shifters um, and also control chips uh, basically to control the flow between the Raspberry Pi whether it's to uh, the TI from the Raspberry Pi or vice versa. It's really very simple in design. And again, the function is only to transmit um, the data, the raw data, image data from the Raspberry Pi to the TI. Um, the whole thing is then processed on the TI-99 for a computer, and we'll talk about that in a second. One of the challenges of using a Raspberry Pi with a parallel port is that, of course, the Raspberry Pi does not have a parallel port. It only has a serial uh, port. And so I had to use the existing GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi to simulate a parallel port. All I needed was basically be able to present data to eight pins on the Raspberry Pi um, simultaneously um, representing a byte of information. And that is what's going on with this connection cable. It presents a byte at a time to the interface gets converted to 5 volts um, and then goes through the the parallel cable to the TI for processing.
In order to better control the positioning of the Pi camera, I 3D printed a uh, very simple um, tripod mount holder for the camera, which I designed myself, and it really consists only of a mounting hole and um, just a slot to slide the Pi camera in. Really simple, but works extremely well. And if anybody is interested in that, I did post that design on Thingiverse. And here's the Capture Studio, if you can call that. I found really the perfect model here to pose for this. And he's my little tin robot. He really never complains and always stands very still. He's really cute. Well, he looks a little, uh, how should I say, uh, camera shy. But um, he'll get over it. So, let's put you back, buddy. All right, and uh, the Raspberry Pi is right there, right there, and connected to, uh, I mean, the camera is right there and connected to the Raspberry Pi down here, etc. Okay, so that's the uh, basic capture setup. Moving on to the uh, Raspberry Pi itself. Here's the terminal connected to the Raspberry Pi itself. And I have to run a program I wrote in Python to uh, initiate the image capture via the Raspberry Pi camera. And this is started by using the terminal shell. So let me go ahead and start that. The program is called TI Vision. All right, so now it's running. And um, what it's doing is it's waiting for a command from the TI to actually initiate the capture and start the transmission. So all I have to do is press a key on the TI, which is running its own program. So let me do that right now. And the camera will activate. There we go. And now it's sending the image to the TI. That's really all there is. And it'll keep going like that until the entire image is transmitted, which takes about 45 seconds. Yes, I know, it's slow. But... We're dealing with 1979 technology here, um, so uh, overall that's really not bad, considering we're sending over 52,000 bytes to the TI during that short time period. So back on the TI, I have written an assembly language uh, driver program, um, which will initiate the image capture on the Raspberry Pi, capture the image, and process it. And I should mention something about the processing. Um, I've tackled both uh, uh, black and white and color processing. Um, the black and white processing is in the form of a high tone, half tone image, um, which is essentially uh, shades of gray, because it is um, easier, far easier to process with the limited hardware we're dealing with. I've tried some very primitive. Uh, processing for color images, um, but the results were really awful. Uh, recognizable, but awful. And so this is something I might want to tackle later on. The problem with um, color processing is that it is extremely intensive in terms of computing and may result in a very slow image capture. Nonetheless, it will be a fun challenge to do. But at this time, um, I'm concentrating mostly on the halftone image. And incidentally, I should mention uh, and thank uh, Mike Brent, who created the program for the PC called Convert 9918, which takes an image um, uh, and converts it to a format that the Texas Instruments computer can display. And he's helped me um, tune the processing uh, software on the TI to get it to do um, the proper halftone processing and uh, the end result is essentially the same process that is used by the convert 9918 program um, with some uh, uh, small differences so let's go ahead and get started here let me just run the program and it's an option 3 in the editor assembler and it's called PI Vision HD for half tone. Oh, we do need the disk drive here. Vision HD. 
see. There we are. Okay. And um, that's uh, all there is to it. Now all I have to do is press a key here. Um, and uh, the process will start. So here we go. So the Raspberry Pi is capturing the image right now and starting sending the image. As you can see, it's starting to show on the screen here. As I stated, it takes about 45 seconds for the entire image to show. And here we can start seeing our nice little robot. Still looks camera shy. His eyes are a little bit uh, widened. <laughs> But he's doing fine. He'll be okay. I don't think he'll be scarred here. So the image is uh, pretty nice overall. This is a half tone image. And uh, we can see here the robot over here. This is the stand he's on. Um, here actually is the back of my uh, dot matrix printer. This is the perforated uh, printer paper that I'm using and some background uh, objects. So here we are. Um, overall I think it looks pretty good. It's highly dependent on lighting and uh, background uh, diffraction. Um, it's very sensitive to light um, and if there is a strong background light then the image doesn't turn as good whereas if the background is dim then the uh, object of the picture uh, stands out much better. But as you can see, I mean, the image is done now. Um, it's uh, quite decent and quite remarkable considering we're dealing with uh, in a technology that's over three decades old. All right, so that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you for watching.